guys today comes from the act of disobedient truly God could have just left Adam to do what he wants but he gave him a strict command he gave him a strict command that he could eat any food that is in the garden except the tree the tree that's in the midst of the garden thou shalt not eat of it for the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt die and we realize that Adam was not tricked, but the woman was tricked because the serpent came to the woman and said, Thou shalt not surely die, because God know that when thou eatest of this tree, you will be like gods, knowing good and evil. And so the serpent beguiled the woman, and the woman took of the tree and did eat. And she did eat and gave to her husband, who did eat also. And um, we know the consequence of that disobedience, what is his cause. Going on, we see how Cain slew his brother Abel. And this was just a repercussion of disobedience to God's command. So on and on we go, we see men become even more vile under the, and turn away from the will and the commandments of God and we see the world has been going backwards and backwards and backwards because of disobedience and now in the 20th century we see the world is on the brink of disaster nuclear disaster because of this disobedience so we must know that disobedience has its consequences and it has great consequence as we will read but I would like us to read the book of Deuteronomy, a few verses down. Deuteronomy, it tells us there is a, the first part of Deuteronomy 28, it tells us about how God would bless us, his people, how God will open doors for us, how God will cause his face to shine upon us. And very, I won't go into that part, but I will go into the part about if you will not obey the word of God. And um, it's from Deuteronomy 28. It's Deuteronomy 28. And I'm going to read from um, verse 15. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28 verse 15. It says, And if thou, but if thou, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to obey and to do his commandment and his statutes, God bless you, Sister Max. God bless you. Since we're reading from Deuteronomy chapter 28, Deuteronomy chapter 28, and I'm reading from verse 15 as you join us. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 15, I'm reading. And the Deuteronomy 28, and I'm going to read up from verse 15, go down. It's um, The topic tonight is about the consequence of disobedience. The consequence of disobedience. So God is talking to Moses to portray these words to the children of Israel, his chosen people. At the first part, from verse 1 to 14, he gave a blessing upon the children who obeyed. But from verse 15 on to verse 29, there's a man, Deuteronomy 28. 28? Yes, 28. 2, 2, 8, and verse 15 I'm reading. Says from verse 15 down. When I read again, it says, but it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do his commandment and his statutes, which I have commanded thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Curse shall be thy basket and thy store. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of the land and the increase of thy kind 
and the flock of thy sheep. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send thee curse in vexation and rebuke in all that thou sittest thine hand unto to do until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings wherefore thou hast forsaken me the Lord shall make thee make the pestilence to cleave unto thee until till he has consumed thee from the land whether thou goest to possess it the Lord shall smite thee in consumption with fever and inflammation and extreme burning with the sword blasting and mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish um, now we're just looking at consequence of disobedience I mean God is a God that never changed he's the same yesterday for it today and forever he doesn't change his laws his statutes does not change God do require us from the beginning of creation even unto today that we obey his word unless we obey the word of God and live in the word of God we are subject we are subject to be under the control of the evil one of the devil so obedience is so, so important. And with obedience comes blessing. With, or di with disobedience come cursing. So it behooves every child of God to adhere to the word of God, to cleave to the word of God, to love the word of God, to obey the word of God. Because therein is our joy, therein is our blessing, therein is, in our, is our prosperity. And therein is everything that we should ever hope for in this life. Is to love God and to keep his commandment. That's all that God ever asks us to do. The will of God is that we we'll serve him. We humble ourselves before Him. We obey His laws. We obey His statutes. And then there come the blessing. But outside of obedience to God, there is a curse. A curse. And I want to look at due to uh, um, First Kings. I want to look at First Kings chapter 13. And... You know, this is a prophet of God who had mighty power with God, who was able to perform miracle, but because of disobedience, he lost he lost everything. He lost his honor, he lost his he lost everything. He even lost his life. And I'm just going to read this story. It's a very interesting story um, about the disobedient prophet. First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13. We're going for a Bible walk. It says, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of God unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood at the altar to burn incense. And he cried, the man of God cried to the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, O altar, thou shalt, thus said the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Joshua, Josh by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high priests that burnt incense upon thee and men bones shall be burnt unto thee and he gave a sign saying this is a sign which the Lord has spoken behold the altar shall be rent and ashes shall be poured out and it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard these words of the man of God that he cried against the altar in Bethel 
and he put forth his hand before the altar saying lay hold on him on his hand which he put forth against him dried up so he could not pull it out again so the man of God cried against the altar that Jehovah was made cried against it and Jehovah resisted and went against the, the word of God and the man of God. And the Bible says, as he went against the man of God, his hand dried up, withered up, withered up, that he could not stretch it out. I don't realize how powerful God is and how strong is the word of God. And the altar was rent, the Bible says in verse 5, the altar was rent and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the son of which the man of God had given to the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord. And the king, this King Jehoboam, answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand may be restored. And the man of God besought the Lord. The man of God appealed to God, and the king's hand was restored again. How mighty, how great was that man of God who had so confident with God that he could talk to God and things could be done. And it says it came to pass. And, it, and the king hand was restored again and became as it was. So as the man of God sought to God to have, to up, make supplication for the king because he did folly. And God heard the, son, the man of God and restored his hand, his withered hand, back to normal. Because our God is a great healer. He's a great and mighty healer. And he went on to say in verse 7 that the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half of thine house, I will not go with thee, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. For it was charged me by the word of God, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again, by the same way that thou comest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way of Bethel. So this man of God was determined to obey the word of God at first. Because the king, after his hand was restored, he said to the man of God, Come, come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. So the man of God was quite appropriately said, No, the Lord has commanded me not to turn aside, not to eat bread, not to drink water. So he obeyed God to that point. And going on, we see this as there was, now there was an old prophet in Bethel and his son came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel and the word which he had spoken unto the king. Then they told also unto their father and their father said unto them, which way, what way went he? For the Son of Man saw the way the man, this man of God went and came from Judah, came from Judah. And he said unto his son, Saddle my, me my ass. So they saddled him his ass and he rode upon them and went after the Son, the man of God, and found him sitting on an oak under an oak and said unto him art thou the man of God that cometh from Judah and he said I am then he said unto him come home with me and eat bread and he said I may not return with thee nor go in with thee neither will I return unto thee 
nor will I go with thee, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. For it is said to me by the word of the Lord that thou shalt not eat bread nor drink water nor turn again to go by the way which thou comest. And the prophet said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And the angel spake unto me the word of the Lord saying, Bring him back with thee to thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him, and he went back and did eat bread in the house and didn't drink. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. I love this story. It's a wonderful story for us to think how at one point this prophet was so obedient to God that when the king, in, when he healed um, the hand of the king, Jobam, and the king invited him to his house and promised him a reward that he would not go. But then came this old prophet, chased him down, found him, and told him that that angel told him to tell that prophet. Now you see the thing is, God is not an author of confusion. If you are a child of God, God should be able to speak to you directly. The, the God gave him a command that he should not eat bread nor drink water in this place when he before he went to turn back. To Judah and he obeyed the king but now this old prophet came to him and said the angel spoke unto him to come back to his house and I don't know where what went wrong with this prophet of God but he lost his way and how easy for us if we do not keep our eyes on Jesus to be turned aside and the man turn away back to the house of this old prophet and he did eat bread and drink water. He believed a lie. So that, that tells us people of God that we are to know and perceive a lie. We ought to be able to distinguish between what is a lie and what is truth. We should be able to, as we are children of God, we should have that spirit of discernment to know a lie from the truth. And so he went back and eat and drink at the prophet's house and it came to pass. Now this is consequence I said the consequence of disobedience. It comes with a cost. And we, we, we have to face reality. Sometimes the word of God is not the sweetest. You know, it can be so the word of God can be bitter in our mouth and bitter in our eyes in our ears. You know, but some things that are good for us can be also bitter. Sometimes the doctor gives us some sort of medication and it's not as sweet as we would hope it would be. It may be not as lovely. It may have a bad taste. But then the doctor prescribes it and says it's good for your symptoms. It's a good, good treatment for your ailment. And so we take it. So the word of God is not always the most sweetest, pleasantest thing. But it is good for our soul. It is good for our salvation. So I went on to say it came to pass that as the, son, as the man sat at the table, this is the man of God, sat at the table, that God would not speak to that prophet anymore. He speak to the false prophet. And the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the son of man. Can you imagine how 
how he, you know, he said, he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, for as much as he has disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and has not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God command thee, but cometh back and has eaten bread and drink water in this place of which the Lord did say unto thee, Eat no bread, drink no water. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. You see, this is how one incur a curse. And this prophet, even though he was so powerful with God, you know, he incurred a curse on himself for disobeying the word of God. No, you know, God take us seriously. And we have to take God seriously. Because our God is, I always say, our God is a serious God. I, I've read the, the, the Bible. And there was only one place I see that the Bible tells us that God laughs. And I think that is in Psalms 2. Why does the heathen rage? And imagine a great, a, a grave thing. Why did the heathen rage? The rulers of the world take assembly against the Lord and against his anointed. The Bible says that God, he sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. That's the one place in the whole Bible I hear of God laugh. So, God is a serious God. So God said, the man of God says, Thou shalt not come unto the sepulchre of your father. And it went on to say in verse 23 of 1 Kings chapter 13. It came to pass that after his eaten bread and drink, he saddled his ass. And for the prophet of whom he had went back. And when he was gone, a lion met him on the way. Oh my God. And slew him. And his carcass was in the way. And the ass stood by it. And the lion also stood by the carcass. The consequence, my brethren, for us all, from every one of us, the consequence, we have to remember, obedience, disobedience as a consequence. And we see that happening to this prophet. We see what happened to him. Now, it behooves us to obey the word of God. Not only to obey the word of God, but to love the word of God. I want to look at another man who disobeyed God. And, you know, Oh, this is King Saul, the first king. The first king of Israel, because we know the story of how all nation, the children of Israel cried to Samuel and said that all nations have their king. We want our own king. And so Samuel told, cried unto the Lord, and the Lord said, that, Let it be. They have not rejected you, Samuel, but they have rejected me. And so God gave them a king. And we're looking at First Samuel, First Samuel chapter fifteen. Another great, another man, a great man who disobeyed God, and the consequence of that disobedience. We look at the prophet who disobeyed God. We're looking at this now, the king who disobeyed God, and the consequence of his disobedience. So 1 Samuel 15, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 16 so we get the story, how it works. Hallelujah. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord has, a, the Lord has sent me to anoint thee king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord of hosts, I remember that which 
Amalek did to Israel, how he laid a wait for him in the way when he went up out of Egypt. And now go and smite the Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant, suckling, ox, sheep, camel and ass. Now this is plain, plain English. Uh, it wasn't English, but it's plain to understand that Samuel gave Saul, the king, a command. He says, I remember. God remember things, you know. When we think God forget, God don't forget. God, God, God remember everything. God, God memory is A1 plus 1. Because the Lord remember how Amalek stood against the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt, laid wait for them and fought against them. And God said, I will catch up with you. So now is the time that God has caught up with Amalek. And now God wanted to exact judgment upon Amalek. And he told Samuel to tell Saul, I remember the, the Amalek, what he did to Israel when he came out of Egypt. Lay wait, lay wait, by the way, and they came out. Now go and smite Amalek. Smite them and utterly destroy all that they have and spill not. You know something? God is so clear when he speaks to us, you know. God don't mince words. He's quite clear when he speaks to us. It's not, it's not like God's word is shady and you don't fully understand. If we need understanding to the word of God, the Spirit itself will open our understanding to his word. God said a commandment given from God to Samuel, to Saul. So I went on to say in verse 4, 1 Samuel 15 verse 4 went on, And Saul gathered all the people together and numbered them in Timlai, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah, 2,000 and 10,000, that's 12,000. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto Kenites, Go, depart, go. Get down from among the Amalites, lest I destroy you with them. For he showed, mercy, he showed kindness to the children of Israel. So, you know, sometimes even when people show kindness to us, you know, God remembers that. Sometimes when people, you know, show any love and kindness to us, God remember that. And God will be passionate if, God, if we're children of God and someone show compassion to us. God remembers that. So it says, so Saul, so, so, so Saul said to the Kenites, go, depart. I don't want to destroy you with the Amalites because you showed favor. You showed kindness to the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. And so the Kenites departed among the Amalites because they were together. And Saul smote the Amalites from Heva unto the comet to Sir that is over by against Egypt and he took Agar the king of Amalites alive and utterly destroyed the people with the edge of the sword. What a great slaughter. But Saul and the people spared Agar the king and the beast and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatlings and the lamb and all good but the but which and all good and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them but everything that was vile and refuse they utterly destroy how did Saul choose above God what is vile or what is 
what is to be refused and what is not to be destroyed. How did he reach that point that he could make such a decision against the will and the word of God, against the commandment of God? How, how did he reach that position that he could exalt his, name, his, 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 his will above the will of God? And God was not pleased. God was not pleased. Then the word of God, the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, after, after Saul has speared the, 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 the king, Agar, and the best of the oxen and the fatlings, and all those, God, God was not pleased. Then the word of God in verse 10, the word of God came to Saul, to Samuel saying, it repent. God bless, God bless you, Brother Clinton. We, um, we are reading um, 1 Samuel 15. About the, the, the subject is about the consequence of disobedience. And we're talking about Saul and Saul's disobedience to God. And verse 10 it says, Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repented me. It repented me that I have made Saul to be king, for he's turned back from following me. So, whenever anyone disobey God, it is will ref it, it it is definitely referred as to turning away, turning back from following God, backslidden from God. Because you're disobedient, it's a sign of backsliding. He said, he has turned back from following me, for he has not performed my commandments. Saul did not perform the commandments of the Lord God. And God was not pleased. God, God said, it repent. You know, you know something, there's several times in the, in the Bible that God, Imagine God Himself, the Almighty God, the All Powerful God, the All Knowing God, the Omniscient God. Imagine Him, the, the ruler of eternity, the ruler of life, the ruler of the universe, the, the great I Am, the altogether lovely, the, the, the mighty God, the El Shaddai. Imagine the God who made everything visible and invisible have to say I repent that's not an easy easy statement to say I repent that I have set up Saul to be king what, what is that that is that is bad when God and God Almighty have to repent when man make God when man may God have to repent because of disobedience. It's not easy. It is not pretty. It is not nice. And Samuel felt it. I can imagine that Samuel felt it to his heart. That God made this man king to rule over his people. And just ask him to do one thing and to do it right. And he couldn't obey. He could not conform to the word of God. He could not perform the order, the order of God. He could not do that. One thing he could not do. And God was grieved. God, God, God said, He repented me that I have set up Saul to be king. And the Bible went on to say in verse 11, and going on, For he has turned back from following me. He has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel. Imagine how Samuel felt because I think Samuel was quite pleased how he could anoint Saul to be king. But at this time Samuel was grieved. You can imagine how grieved he was because obviously when God said it repented him, when God said he repented him, it means, oh my God. And, and he cried. The Bible says, it grieved Samuel and he cried all night. Imagine how he must have felt. 
just because Saul did not obey what God told us, tell him to do. All because of that, it caused grief. It grieved the prophet. And the prophet cried all night. Just because Saul did not obey the word of God. Then, and when Samuel goes to meet Saul in the morning, that it was told Samuel saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place and gone about and passed on to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Gilgal, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandments of the Lord. And Samuel says, What meaneth then is this bleating of sheep in mine ear, and the lowing of the oxen I hear? And Saul says, They, they have bought them from the Amalekites. And the people spare the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. And he lied. You see, when, when, when we disobeyed, we end up telling lies. Because when we try to justify ourselves... When we know we've done something wrong, when we know we disobey, we try to justify ourselves with a lie. So Saul said, I have bought them from the Malachi the, for the people speared. The people speared the best of the sheep. God never gave any commandment to the people. He gave commandment to the King Saul. So how are you going to say now the people speared? Your command was, you are the chief command, chief commander. You can't come and say that the people speared. You was told, you was given a command to destroy the Amalekites, every one of them. And you say the people speared the best of the sheep and the sh to sacrifice unto God. Well, Samuel told him, listen. Obedience is better than sacrifice, you see, because all the sacrifice that you sacrifice don't mean nothing to God outside of obedience. All the sacrifice, it means nothing to God. What means something to God is obedience. But, and he went on to say, in verse 16, Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said unto me this night. And he said, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou were little in thine own sight, was thou made to be head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel, and the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, destroy the sinners. They see, the Amalekites were sinners. They were evildoers. They were godless. They were God-haters. Even as, you know, as we see some people are in these days, sinners. God said, utterly destroy the sinners, Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore thou didn't, wherefore, so Samuel is asking Saul now, why didn't you obey the voice of the Lord? In verse 19, wherefore did us now, wherefore, why you didn't obey the voice of the Lord? But did fly upon the spoil and did us vie evil in the sight of the Lord? And Samuel said unto him, I have obeyed. You see, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. How could he have obeyed when he disobeyed and he think he obeyed? How can we obey? How can we disobey and think we obeyed when we disobeyed? Because Samuel, Saul said unto Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. No, you did not. 
and I've gone the way which the Lord sent me. No, you did not. And I've bought, bought, I'm bought back king of Agar, the king of Amalekite. And I've utterly destroyed the Amalekite. No, you did not. You did not. So the consequence of that is that Samuel said, but verse 21 says, but the people took the spoil and the sheep. Now he's, he's blaming the people again. He's blaming the people again. But the people took the spoil of the sheep and the oxen and the chief things. Let, let us not blame somebody for what we, when we disobey God. Blame somebody else. Because, you know, in the, as we start about the, the Garden of Eden, when God told Adam not to eat of every tree, not, not to eat of the tree in the midst of the garden. And when God said, what have thou done? Now, God didn't go to Eve to find out why, why he eating the fruit. Even though Eve was the first one to eat the fruit, God never went to Eve. He went to Adam and said, Has thou eaten the fruit which I commanded thee not to eat? And now Adam is making a big excuse. The woman thou gavest to me. You see how people like to make excuses to God? The Bible says, the songwriter says, Make no longer vain excuses. Make no longer vain excuses. Adam said, the woman that thou givest unto me. God tell you not to eat of the fruit. He never told the woman. He told you. He told you. Adam, he told you not to eat of the fruit. He didn't tell Eve. And now Saul is blaming the people now. God didn't give the people no order. God, Samuel did not give the people no order. Samuel gave Saul the order said to kill everything, all the Amalekites that came out of Egypt, when that stood against the children of Israel, when they came out of Egypt, destroy every one of them. That's the order. But Saul is saying, but the people took the spoil of the spoil of the sheep and the oxen and the chief things which are, which thou hast been utterly destroyed and the sacrifice, to sacrifice unto the Lord in Gilgal and Samuel says hath the Lord great delight in burnt offering and he said these words as in obeying the voice of the Lord he said behold to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lambs and there we go there we see consequence so because of that Samuel Saul lost the power of his throne and lost the domain he had over the children of Israel the kingdom of Israel took out of his hand that very same day he disobeyed God so my brethren obedience the word is the consequence of obedience but the result is Obedience is better than sacrifice. Behold, to obey is better than the sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lambs. May God bless you, my brethren. May God bless you all. And, you know, it's a wonderful story when we remember and think about, you know, how God expects us to, to serve him. And, you know, for every one of us, every child of God, we, we need to know that, you know, there is a great blessing in serving God. There is a great blessing in serving God. There is a great blessing in serving God. And we, we, we are to just serve God in spirit and in truth. And God will bless us and open windows of heaven from us. And we will be blessed in coming in and going out. And we will, we will be the head and not the tail. And we, all the blessing that God has, God will open the windows of heaven and Pour out blessing upon us more than we have room to receive. So let us continue as children of God to obey the word of God and serve him in spirit and in truth. God bless you all. I'm glad to have Sister McLean and Pastor Winston and Delion and P.T. and all being with us tonight. God bless you. I am going to ask 
Sister McLean to give us a, a word before I ask Pastor Winston. Sister McLean, give us a word. God bless you. Good to have you on our teleconference. So always good to hear from you. Thank you very much, Brother Tenson, for this privilege, for opportunity, and okay. Amen. Very wonderful this evening as we have. I'm coming up with the flu. Oh my. Thank God. We pray for you. Thank God for and His mercy. I just want to greet you all, my beloved brethren. In the most wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Praise God. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. Or in the presence of the Lord is the fullness of joy. joy. Amen. Greet you, Brother Pam. God bless you. And the Sister Rose and pa Brother Clinton. Yes. And the rest of Bridgerton. I have heard his name. I greet you well this evening. We you know it is so good to be united together because yes. unity is strength. Amen. And I'm so happy this evening to be in the company of God's wonderful people. Listening to the voice of our dear brother Tamsa as he was speaking on the topic of disobedience and the consequence of disobedience. You know, Disobedience is sin, and we so as children of God, we ought to be obedient. For a true worship comes from an obedient heart. And as he went on to say about this young prophet, he was warned by God not to eat or drink anything on his journey. Yes. And even when the king offered him, he said he he offered in half the kingdom, he would not. He would not break the vow no. because he has got he has got a command. And so this other prophet, as an old prophet, sent John calling to come and have meal with him. We should wait. He should not have obeyed. But I think you know would say as an older person and a younger person that young that older one would know better and he, he would be the one that would help you to guide you in your Christian journey. Yeah. So probably that's the reason why probably if I just put it in my own words, he would have turned back and to have a meal with him, eat and drink with him. And you know on his way back the Alliance tour. Yes, him. yes, my God. The, the, the old prophet got the news. And when he heard that, what he said is the disobedient prophet. Yes. Can you imagine? After he, uh, after he entreated him to come Yes, back, yes, yes. Then now he's going to say is the disobedient prophet. So when our God has given us a command, let us not be disobedient That's and right. be foolish. That's right. Follow God's instruction. And as uh, their brother Sam went on to say again about Saul, Saul was rejected by God. Saul would not hear from God because what God has told Saul what, what to do, Saul did not no. do it. Saul blamed it on somebody else. Says the people who leave the rest of the sheep there, and when Samuel asked, what about that green pin? You know, he tried to disown it. Yes. You know, but the Spirit of God was so evident on, on, on Samuel. He knew that it was not the people and that Saul was lying. Mm -hmm. And so God saw the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Yes. He was rejected by God. Oh, my. It's a different thing when you have been rejected yes, by yes, God. Yes, yes, yes. You are rejected by God, you're doomed yes. forever. Amen. You know, and that's the reason why I went to seek a witch yes. in Edward. Yes. And he tried to 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 um to hide himself, disguise himself. Yes. You know, but the witch found out that it was so yes. because they want to bring up Samuel. Samuel. To tell him what's going on. So, 
I'm saying in my own words, disobedience is sin. And we should be obedient to the word of God. Yes. Because had Saul been obedient, what happened to Saul would not have happened. That's right. He had been rejected by God. He, he lost his lost his crown, his, his kingdom. kingdom mm. Kingdomship. Yes. He lost his authority. And so, you know, he become wordless. He become useless. Yes. And so we today, if we are disobedient, the same thing will happen to us. So we, I pray that we all be obedient to the word of God because the word of God is there to guide us when we derail, when we get off track. The word of God is here to bring us back. And we must be obedient to the word of God. Because if we are disobedient, we won't reach anywhere. And remember, disobedience is sin. That's and, right. And the summarizer, right? He is not to temptation yes. or healing sin. Yeah. So may the Lord bless you all, brethren. This is my few words in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, Sister Mark. It's always good to hear from you. God bless you. Woman of faith, I know from experience, you know, how you've been so faithful to the Lord and the part, this part, all the church troubles and whatever. But you um, know you're a very strong woman of God. God bless you. I want to hear now from um, um, our dear um, brother Clinton. I want to give us a word of encouragement or testimony, whatever the Lord put on your mind. It's good to see you today in church. <laughs> we we took selfie together. <laughs> you know, I have to give God thanks and praise. Amen. I, today it was a blessing seeing your brother Samson and Sister Rose. Amen. Yes, time. amen. And we have to just obey. We don't want to be like Saul. Because he was a disobedient man. Yes. But to him. You know, so all we have to do is to hope and pray. And I give you a little encouragement to the person to continue with this teleconference, no matter what. Amen. You know, because it, it helps not only me alone, but I think it helps a lot of people who listen to it and tune in, maybe from in this country, abroad, yeah. wherever across the world, where they may um, um, tune in to listen to it. We may not have a lot of time, but <coughs> time fulfills everything. And the Lord, if the Lord gives us one minute, it's one minute. And if they give us a thousand days, it's a thousand days, and nothing we can do about it. So I hope and pray that everything will go well in the name of Jesus. You know, thank you very much for inviting me also. And if I'm telling you, Amen. Bless you, my brother. God bless you. God bless you, brother Clinton. God bless you. <laughs> Sister McLean, I hope you take some honey and lime for that church, you know. You need to take a lot of the vitamin C for that throat. You need to. God bless you. But Pastor, Pastor Winston, I don't know if you're there. I see you, you're there, but I don't know if you're, you are there. Or you. But anyway, God bless you all. God bless you, Brother Clinton, indeed. It's really good to see you today. And um, 
and God bless you. And see my sister Mark, God bless you. I see my son Delian is there as well. Bless you, Delian. And um and PT. Pa Pastor Winston? Okay. Well we we'll 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 call it a day. We'll call it a day. We'll close off today. But God bless you. We've had a lot of events this week. Um you know we have and and we see the death of um, Queen Elizabeth and we see a new Prime Minister. So we see a lot of changes going on, lots of things going on. But whatever, my brethren, keep your eyes on Jesus. And Oh, God bless you, brother, brother Pastor Winston. God bless you, sir. God bless you too, sir. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. So you give us a few words before we close. Give us a few words, um, whatever the Lord put on your heart. It's always good to hear from you. Amen. Amen. Jesus is my king. That's right. He's my savior. Amen. Yes. Yes. It is. Bless you, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you all. And um, God bless you. Yes, have a blessed week. Um, God bless and keep you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for all my brethren joining the teleconference. I pray your hand will be upon them, Lord. I pray your anointing will be upon them, Lord. I have a special prayer, Lord Jesus, for Sister McLean, your daughter, Lord, who's suffering from a cold at this moment. Oh God, I pray you will touch her right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray that she may be healed right now in the name of Jesus of this cold that's in her chest or whatever it is, Lord. Let there be healing right now, Jesus, upon Sister McLean. I touch her, Lord Jesus, in the name of Jesus with a holy anointing right now. Also, I pray for Pastor McCann, oh God, Pastor Winston, Lord, I pray your hand will be upon him, Lord Jesus. I pray you'll put your angel to guard over him, Lord, to touch his body, Lord, from the corner of his head to the sole of his feet. Let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Hallelujah. Touch my son daily and bless him also, Lord. Cover him under your blood, Lord. Protect him from every danger, seen and unseen, Lord Jesus. Let your hand be upon him, Lord. Bless him, Lord Jesus, for keeping joining us tonight. Bless PT also. Let your hand be upon her. Bless, O oh God, everyone of your people who are here tonight. Lord, Brother Clinton, bless him also, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus, in our life. Pray you will keep us through the course of the week, through the course of our life. Protect her from every danger seen and unseen as we bind the forces of darkness right now and we cast down every negative forces that come up against us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I claim deliverance. I claim victory. I claim a blessing upon your people right now in Jesus' name. Bless your people 
Keep us, cover us under your blood and give us the victory. Touch my wife also. Bless her, Lord. Cover under your blood, Lord Jesus. Keep her. Use her to thy praise and to thy glory. I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you glory. In the name of Jesus, I say amen. 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 Bless you all. Bless you all. Bless you, Delion, my son. Bless you. Have a great week. Yes, love you all. Get well soon, my, my sister McLean and Pastor Winston. Get well soon. Take your honey and your lemon. Take your honey and your lemon. Say hello to Ray, follow me. 